Four weeks after a popular restaurant nearly burned to the ground, a man is behind bars for allegedly lighting the match. No matter how you feel about Hillary Clinton politically, when she walks onto this stage tonight to accept the nomination of the Democratic Party for president, she is making history. And people here in Philadelphia say this is the perfect city for this to happen in. Two Visalia men are in jail, accused of making sandwiches laced with meth. Donald Trump is flatly denying new accusations that he groped, fondled, and kissed women without their consent. A woman and her baby daughter in the hospital tonight, a police officer lucky to be alive, all of this after a shooting and a standoff in Tulare. Hey there, good evening, I'm Evan Onstock. Jerry Brown in his four terms has given many state of the state addresses as governor, but this year with Donald Trump in the White House and many looking at Jerry Brown to see how the governor would respond, this one might have been his most watched. Colorado was good to Bernie Sanders. He beat Hillary Clinton by 20 points earlier in the year. Now with Clinton set to win the party's nomination, many Bernie Sanders supporters are having a hard time letting go. And it's not just the water, it's also dangerous items like debris, entire trees being swept down here. That's the bad news. The good news is that earlier today, this water would have been up at about my head. Bring that turkey, bring that check, that cash, it doesn't matter. Bring it on over, we're gonna drop it off right here in this bin. John, take a look at this. This is what we're talking about. And by the way, Evan, your Broncos are still not here. Thank you. I appreciate you reminding me once again, Andrew. Andrew Martin, live in Houston. We're not going to talk to him again the rest of the week. I've just decided. we got more big game coverage coming up, including how one lucky man is actually going to the game for free. And what jumps out to me is that we're all new to this. We're all learning as we go, not just the kids, the parents. Yes. Social media and the, the ramifications, the responsibility, this is all new for yeah, everyone. Right. Stephanie, many of the veterans that came out here brought with them to Washington six or seven decades of pent-up emotions. And a lot of that came out today in places like the World War II Memorial here. But there was also a lot of smiles, some fond memories, and gratitude shown from the younger generations to the greatest generation. Each candidate will have up to 60 seconds to respond to the question, and when their time is up, we're going to hear a ding, and then you just wrap it up. You've said get up to about a thousand mm -hmm. over time. What's the timeline that you're looking at? And you mentioned the <clears> price. <throat> I mean, it's it's a six-figure it's about price tag for just about every single officer. It's roughly about. $20 million a year. That's the price. Tag. How are we paying for that? Some people, though, still say it's still fair to tie a Republican congressman to the person at the top of the Republican ticket. Well, look, I think David Valadeo and every other member of Congress can speak for themselves as to who they are and what they believe in. Governor, your national profile has been raising, raising over the past years. And really, I think that's been accelerating here recently. When you're addressing a crowd of, of this magnitude, what are you trying to keep in mind? And really, what do you see in your own future for yourself and your career? You can't just throw around those 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 accusations unless you're absolutely positive that's exactly what happened. And and people are asking, well, what if she gets on the council and she makes right. that same sort of judgment mistake again? So, you know, here's the thing. You know, I, this is my first time running for office. This is my first time debating. Yeah, my you, opponent has run four times. But you do PR for a living, you know. I, I mean, don't, you do crisis communication. I don't debate politically. It's been another big week for local politics and national politics that affect us locally. And he's well liked in that district. But this is not your typical That's election right. year. Donald Trump is at the top of the ticket. I know Paul Ryan and, and Valadeo will distance themselves as much as they possibly right. can. But they're both Republicans. They're right. both on the same ballot. Could this bite Valadeo come election day? It could. The California delegates are many, but they don't have the best view in the House. Here is center stage. California is way over there off the floor. You wrote, lightweight. I cannot wait to debate this guy. Um, what did you mean by that, first of all? And, and second of all, now that the three of us are here, do, do you still feel that same way? No, I think that... Uh, it's not just the people on Church Street who are staying put. It's also a lot of the people here at Bass Lake Mobile Home Park. Almost every single one of these units are occupied. And with the water receding, I just spoke to a gentleman who lives here. He says they feel very, very good that they're going to be able to wait this thing out. We're in North Fork tonight. Evan Onstott, KC24, local news that matters. If you want to know what has downtown Cleveland jam-packed this week, just follow the merchandise. For eight-year-old Amir, business is good. Some people came over here and bought three buttons. Just not for him. My dad got twenty dollars and didn't give me none. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't walk by. Don't look shy. Come see the Trump guy. These vendors are not from Cleveland. Many have followed Donald Trump across the country, rally to rally. 
For some, it's just business. To others, like Steve Scanlon, it's more. I mean, I've been a Trump supporter ever since uh, he uh, announced that he was going to run. Right here, buttons one for five, three for ten. Like many Trump fans, Noah Taylor sees a little bit of himself in the Republican nominee. I admire his entrepreneurship. Me being a, a, a young entrepreneur man, his business aspect, I really admire it. Um, I don't agree with everything that he says, but you'll never agree with everything that anybody says, you know. You're punishing the people who wait in line. Of course, the merchandise is not the only thing that draws a crowd. Protesters and Trump supporters rub elbows here. Anytime an argument flares up, the cameras come out. Some of the messages are outlandish. Others are more subtle. But all of it, the crowds, the security, the protests, it's just a day on the job for the merchandise vendors. Traveling salesman chasing that American dream. No matter how you feel about Hillary Clinton politically, when she walks onto this stage tonight to accept the nomination of the Democratic Party for president, she is making history. And people here in Philadelphia say this is the perfect city for this to happen in. They say the best tour guides are the locals. And in Philadelphia, local knowledge goes way back. I love it down here. Every time I come down here, I get goosebumps. I'm such a big, big history fan, and I just love it. In the shadow of Independence Hall, steps from where this country's foundation was built, local teachers Michelle Stingle and Joan Warwick were only too happy to stop and talk history. They came together collectively to say, we want something different. We want something new. And it's not your idea, and not just my idea, but it's all of our ideas. And I feel like Philadelphia sort of encompasses that. They picked a great place to create history. As Clinton becomes the first woman to accept a major party nomination for president, well, delegates from around the country say Philadelphia is the perfect place to witness history. I mean, everywhere you look when you're walking around the, the city, you see this you know, building or this church and how old it is and the Liberty Bell. And then you're comparing it to, you know, uh, probably our first woman president. We certainly hope our first woman president and all that's going on with that. And it just like sinks in, it overwhelms you. It's a city of history. It's a great place to be for this historic moment in American history. I think we need a woman president in there. Let's, let's see what she can do. Let's give her that opportunity. First female president, that won't be determined until November. But this is history wow, nonetheless. And perhaps so no one is happier that it's happening here than the Democrats who live here. Well, you know, Philadelphia is the city of first. I, I'm just filled with pride. The California delegates are many, but they don't have the best view in the house. Here is center stage. California is way over there off the floor. Of course, after this week, that's when the real work begins for both parties, and we'll be watching exactly what happens next. KC24 is your local election headquarters. This is an election that many people would like to see over. Yeah, but the freedom to choose our leaders, even if you don't love the options, that freedom, that right, it has been protected by generations of Americans serving this country. Now, I was with the 12th Central Valley Honor Flight last week when it traveled to Washington, D.C., I asked these, better, these veterans about the right to vote and about their sacrifice to preserve it. Many told me they worry younger Americans are taking it for granted. At the World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C., there's a wall with 4,048 gold stars. Each star represents 100 Americans killed or missing in the war. It's called the Freedom Wall. Nowhere else is the price of freedom so clear. 409,000 killed in action, 37,000 in Korea. That, 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 that's a price. Two weeks before Election Day, Al Perry made his 12th trip as president of the Central Valley Honor Flight. It's a program that takes World War II and Korean War veterans to see the memorials built for them in the nation's capital. For many of the vets, like Bill McGlasson, it's an emotional experience. It has bugged me since I came home. Yeah. I was the only one that came home unscratched. That's, that sticks with you. I miss him. I miss him real bad. Joe Biscaglio was supposed to serve side by side with his best friend in the Korean War. But on the flight to Washington, he told me only his friend got sent to Asia. He did not. We corresponded together for a whole year. I, I kept writing him and he stopped writing. I lost quite a few of my friends. Uh, 
That's it. Many of these veterans lost good friends, and that's something Perry wants people to remember this election season. He says without their service, the rest of us might not even have the opportunity to vote. They paid, and their comrades paid, for a chance for us to do that. It's a, it's a gift they gave us. Paul Leffler agrees. He's the vice president of the Central Valley Honor Flight. Freedom is not free. These are the men and women who paid for it, who put their lives on the line, and they all have friends that didn't get to come home. They know how close they were to not coming home. And when we really appreciate it, I think we do take responsibility in that freedom. It is a motivator to vote. But is that freedom being taken for granted? I pray for the future of our country. Retired Navy pilot Richard Rigg thinks it might be. He worries young Americans don't take voting seriously, the military seriously, or even have a sense of patriotism in general. I, I'm wondering what's happening in our schools today, uh, whether they are really instilling any of that into our kids at all. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you. Clearly, at least some kids are being raised right. Entire classrooms of children went up to the veterans at the World War II Memorial and handed them cards and pictures and told them, Thank you. Because we know that how much they did for our country and how much they deserve our respect. Before they left Washington, the honor flight watched the changing of the guard at Arlington National Cemetery. Reedley veteran Audrey Hovey helped lay a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. She says it made her think of those who did not return. It's a representation of not just a unknown soldier, but many, many unknown soldiers and their families. And it's that sacrifice that Perry wants everyone to think about this election season. These men and women fought to preserve and spread freedom. It would be a shame to put that to waste. They protected my right to vote, your right to vote, your viewers right to make a choice. And, and same thing for the Europeans or, or same thing for the countries that were liberated by these people. They would not have that if they hadn't made that sacrifice. If, if, even if it's my last visit, uh, the, the whole thing is uh, I honored him, him I, and I honored his name. Thank you again. Thank we you cannot you. shake every hand, but we can cast a ballot. And in a way, that is honoring these veterans. Sir, good morning. Thank you so much for your service, sir. That is saying thank you. And for more information on the upcoming election, including voter resources, how you can put your voice to work, you can head to our website, yourcentralvalley.com. It's great to hear their perspective on it. It is. It really makes you appreciate the opportunities we have to vote and and kind of direct the course yeah. of our country. We take it for granted really yes. easily sometimes. When yeah. we stop and think about it, it's, yeah. it's almost overwhelming, to be yeah. honest.